And today, yes, uh, today uh, we, we have uh, Dr. Manuel Suarez Barraza from uh, Mexico, right? And we are right. uh, very uh, excited to have him with us. So uh, I would like to tell you that uh, he's going to present uh, in 40 or 45 minutes. And his uh, title of speech is Workshop uh, Process Innovation. And he will be talking about Kaizen uh, processes, uh, basically. And during, the, during his presentation, uh, please mute yourself. And if you have any questions, uh, please write your questions on chat box. I will be collecting all the questions. And after uh, Mr. Dr. Barraza finishes his presentation, I will be asking uh, your questions to him directly. So before leaving the screen to Dr. Barraza, I would like to introduce him. And I also would like to say uh, if he has anything to add about himself, and please, doctor, uh, add anything about yourself, okay? So uh, today's discussion, uh, today's talk will be a process innovation technique using Kaizen philosophy approach. And this will be presented by Dr. Manuel Suarez Barraza. And he's a doctor in management science from the Higher School of Business Administration and Management. And as I can see, he has a, a very, uh, he has a very long uh, professional experience in uh, different countries, in different organizations. And in addition to his professional experience, he has an academic experience as well. And he has uh, lots of uh, articles uh, published in uh, different uh, journals. And that's all uh, I would like to say about him and Dr. Baraza. It's a great pleasure to have you with us. And the floor or the screen or the Zoom is yours. And okay, thank you. please go ahead. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm really sorry for the delay, but sometimes there are some technical problems. But I'm very happy to be here and to have the opportunity to share for you uh, one of the, my main philosophies in the world. In the world, I, I just not Japanese philosophy, I think it's in the world, the Kaizen philosophy. Uh, in the middle of the night, I had the opportunity to be a student, apprentice, uh, like Japanese say, the Kohai, for the Masaki Mai Sensei, the man who, who introduced the concept in the world, in the management arena, about the Kaizen. So uh, I was training in Toyota Motor Corporation in, in the middle of the night. I was in the Tsukumi plant. So I lived, I lived this philosophy in 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 the middle of the night, but around around the world, I, I try to introduce this concept in order to improve the organizations in productivity and operational efficiency. So let's see what, what is about this. And uh, let's see how process innovation is fit, fit very well in this kind of philosophy. Uh, okay. First of all, we want to introduce the concept of the MUDA in the, 20, in the organization of the 21th century. What, what is the MUDA? Let's see this image. What, what you can see in the image? If you can see in the image, there is a clear boat and everybody's inside of the boat. But uh, there are some people that say, we are happy, it's not our side. But the big problem, the big problem is in the organization, everybody is in the same boat. Some, somebody want to work, and somebody try to work, and somebody doesn't work. So that, that's a very interesting point of view because sometimes the organization feels like we are working alone and we are not working in a process. So if you can see the claim of the Peter Drucker, Peter Drucker said, much of what we call management is to make people have a hard time to do their job well. And sometimes we create some management systems that are complex and create the process in a very difficult situation and move around the process in a very strong and a complex organization that they feel that everything goes well, but sometimes it's very difficult to do. For example, what happened with the process, with the work process? So you can see that the process is invisible. Sometimes the process is the departmental focus. There is a clear lack of internal customer because we never think in the customer. The another person that you get something 
inside of your organization is an internal customer because they receive a some output for you. And the MUDA is inside of organization. MUDA and plus MUDA, MUDA plus MUDA. The way the word MUDA is a Japanese word that we call, and we can translate as a waste. Uh, is any activity that consume resources and don't get value added for you. And that means you don't accomplish the requirement for the customers. And sometimes this process go around for the organization, moving around, and the customer is waiting for you. Yes, for the output, some goods, final goods, or some service, and nothing happens sometimes. Process with quality problems, prop, sorry, products with quality problems, service with quality service, bad quality service, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, in the in the middle of the 90s, the, I will I will try to make an analogy that is very interesting. In the middle of the 18 in the 80s, in Argentina they discovered a big big, big dinosaur. The Argentine, the Argentina people call Argentinosaurus. It's one of the biggest uh, brontosaurus discovered in, in in the history of the of the of the earth. Biggest animal, you know, it has 60 meters of height, 40 of 48 of 51 meters of long, 110 ton weight. Just the femur is around 2.5 or 3 meters of the lead. The neck, the neck, just the neck is 10 or 12 meters of the net. It's the, the, the same size of the one bus. Can, can you see? Can you imagine? It's a very big a animal, huge animal. Um, the, the paleontologist discovered that when the velociraptor bite in the lead and the nervous moving around, the nervous signal moving around to the neck, 10, 10 or 12 meters, going around to the brain and say, you have to move, the, you have to move your lead. And the central and the nervous and the nervous signal came up, came down again. What happened in that moment? The Argentinosaurus don't have lead, and they lose the lead, and the velociraptors eat him. What is analogy about that? What is the process in the organization? The process in organizations is in the leg of the organization. It's in in the operational area. When the central nervous signal try to go over to the CEO. Or the middle manager, sometimes it's too late because the velociraptors, the muda, is over there and they buy you every day, every hour, and every minute in your process. So we have to work to try to improve and to eliminate the muda. The people and the workers sometimes have some effects and some impacts about this muda. One of the main problems is that they don't align. They don't create an alignment with the shared vision of the organizational vision for the organization. And sometimes they don't follow the standard. They don't, they don't follow the process. And they have a lot of problems with employees about that. Let, let's see one uh, small research that they did in, Sp in Spain. And what happened with the time of the working in every, every season? I mean, in every, in every, in every work day, for, for example. They say el 12%, I, I will call in Spanish, but I will translate, el 12% del horario laboral, lo, laboral lo pasamos sin dar palo. It means that some, some the workers don't do nothing in the 12% of the time in a daily work. 12% of the time. I think, it's, I think sometimes it's a low because sometimes we have companies that they are 30% or 40%. Workers don't do nothing. What do the workers do? Yeah. Using the telephone. I mean, I mean... Uh, uh, social networks, yeah, maybe WhatsApp. Uh, I mean, long time of the web page. Where there are so many uh, electronic games, Candy Crush, wherever, and everybody is moving around in his own issues. And then they don't know nothing because what happened with the productivity time? What happened with what value added time? Most of the time is mood. And I don't want to say that the workers is has his their own fall and everything is all for them. No, 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 it's they are guilty for this situation. The, 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 the main problem is the thought management don't want to see that the older organization have muda and we have to work in this to eliminate this muda. Uh, I already said what is a muda is any activity that consume resource and does not meet customer requirements and does meet value added for the organization. In the classical way, in the classical way, Taishi Ogno, Sensei, the man that we create the Toyota production system, say that there are, we have 
seven types. Overproduction, delay, transport, flow of process, high stop. <laughs> the, I mean, high stop is uh, related, is very strong related with overproduction. Uh, the Japanese call the high stop the kill it series. Because you can kill it by yourself very slowly, slowly, because the holding cost is very high in the inventory process and it's very difficult to do. Movement. Movement is more related to ergonomic, ergonomic movement of the workers. It's similar to transport, the movement transport, but the transport is moving around also materials. And of course, the final one, the def defeat. Defeat or errors or failures in the, in the final process. And you can see in the image a lot of them. I was working in so many organizations in all over the world, uh, and I can see so many of them. You can see here the seven types of Taiichi Omnos, but you can see, for example, accumulating inventories, waiting for material work on, temporary stage, yeah, moving heavy, moving heavy objects, transferring parts over the long of the distance. I mean, transport for everywhere. Sometimes the factories look like, like Disneyland, yeah, because they moving around the material around them. They can see the game like this. You can see the game like this is wow. So many, so many situations, very complicated. Defects or failures, searching for tools, rewards, machine failures, machine matching runs. That's a very clear situation. And sometimes we, got, we are thinking about it just for manufacturing. It's also for service. I can see people that it's a copy machine waiting for 200 copies stand up over there and they say what what are you doing over there what are you doing over there you have to looking for the productivity and efficiency operational efficiency of your process in every moment so the muda is like a cancer yeah this moving around like a cancer inside of you in your organization and stay of you in your organization and it's like argentinosaurio is buy for you that the velociraptor in your legs and sometimes you can lose your organization if you still don't do nothing to solve this problem or to eliminate this mood. Let's go for the another subject. Let's go what is a Kaizen philosophy and how Kaizen philosophy can help us to eliminate this mood in the organizations. First of all, we can see the Kaizen. I will go to the another slide and I will come back and do this slide. What, what is a Kaizen? Kaizen is a very old philosophy, Japanese philosophy that is, is compound the, number, the name with two main ideograms. The first ideogram is called Kai, that means change of continuity, and the second one is for the better. Sen is mean for the better. Sometimes uh, some academics relate these kanjis with some uh, draws. We remember the kanjis or ideograms are very old, yeah? And every kanji has his own meaning. And the Japanese old people make the re reality of the natures and they try to draw this in a possible character that you have to have some meaning. This character at the beginning, it was a person. Can you see here? The head, I will draw here. Sorry because, I, okay, thank you. So arms, lips, here there's a person. And then the second one, the sen, you can see a tree, yeah? The leaf, the rooks over here. So kaizen in ancient times in Japan, in Japan, is mean the person who cares every day his own tree. It means you have to grow with your tree every day. That's change for continuity. That's change for the world. I need continuous improvement principle to grow every day and to move in around. So the organizations had to look in for persons that had harmony around, around himself, first of all, and then to grow up with his team partners here yeah, and with the organization. So if you can see the definition, you can see the definition. For Masaki Mai Sensei, Kaizen is a continuous improvement or in improvement in social, family, personal, and work life. In the workplace, Kaizen means continuous improvement that involves everyone, managers, and workers alike. 
And one of his teaching, in my sense, I say to me, the Kaizen is very simple to, to, the, to make a definition. And he said to me, if you think every minute in improvement, you are making Kaizen. That clear, that's a clear Japanese claim, yeah? Every minute you have to, to think in improvement, okay? Sometimes for another country, it's difficult to do that. Maybe one hour, maybe one day, maybe one week, but it's difficult. Another definition, um, uh, my, my, my own definition is uh, Kaizen is a management philosophy that generates incremental improvements in the war method or war process, which allows to reduce waste or muda and consequently improve work performance and employee satisfaction. So we are in front of one of the main, main philosophies to improve your organization, to improve and to eliminate your muda. That's a very important point because this, this concept has at least four main values. Inside of this, the employees have to leave these four main values in order to apply yeah, in a correct way Kaizen philosophy. The first of all value is the honor. Honor is mean that you have to accomplish with your work. If you say something, you have to accomplish. Yeah, that's a very important point because uh, when you have an, a standard operation procedure in the process, you have to follow this standard operation procedure to do. Second one is the discipline. Discipline that is very related with constancy. Discipline is the, in a very simple way to make a definition, is to follow a one method. Sometimes we say we are disciplined persons, but uh, it's a very difficult, difficult to do it. I want to, I want to try to focus, I don't know in Turkey, but in Mexico it's very common that at the beginning of the year we make some kind of objectives, or some kind of a new year proposal or new year objectives. And everybody say, I will, I will make exercise every day of this year. And we started very well. So uh, the public jeans and the private jeans are very, very crowded at the beginning of the year in January because everybody wants to make exercise at the beginning of the year. What happened in the middle of the year? Everybody lose the discipline and everybody lose the motivation to go to the, to the gym. As a matter of fact, uh, when the year is finished, everybody to repeat the same new year proposal. So... What happened with the discipline? Discipline is an important point. Uh, so many academic finds that when the organization try to get motivation of the people, one of the most important points is operat operative discipline in the organization. Constancy is the same. Constancy is the discipline uh, during the time. I mean, you are disciplined in one year, you have to be disciplined in the second year, in the third year, and the fourth year. And finally, is the teamwork. Sometimes we have to do something in the in individual way, but the teamwork can help you to be more potential and more strong, more strong and to control more the process and to improve more the process. So if you relate all, all these, these situations with the Kaizen philosophy, we have a philosophy that the person want to grow up every day, want to improve every day, and they had to follow the his own strong values like honor, discipline, constancy, and teamwork. Well, okay. Uh, if you have any question, please, please put in the chat. Um, and I will answer uh, after the, the finish the time. Let's go to the methodology of the process innovation. Inside of the Kaizen philosophy, we have this methodology. That's a very strong methodology. Yeah, very strong methodology in order to eliminate and to reduce the muda inside of your own process of the organization. What is a process? Process is a set of activities that transform inputs into the outputs. That's a very important point. What is the main key word of the definition? Transforms inputs into the outputs. If you have a whoop, some piece of wood, and you go to the process and you transform this whoop in a table or in a chair, that is a very simple example of what is a process. And of course, it's a connected, a logical chain of activities with use resource of organization that transforms these refines, these inputs in a physical and sometimes in an abstract output in order to ensure measurable on a specific result for an internal or an external customer. And what, as we can see in the, in the, in the beginning of the, of the, of the talk, we see this slide and we can see the process is moving around of, the, of one organization and, move, and we have to the end an output. The output will be 
in a physical way that it will be a physical goods or will be in an abstract way that will be is a possible to be a service. So every process has these five elements. These five elements moving around in a, this system. This is a very clear system that is, wor is working in all the organizations. Every element is making a strong relationship with all the, all the another element. For example, we have a customer here. The customer, the customer is the people who receive the output. We have an output that is the final product, what is the final product of the customer. The final product of the customer. We had a supplier. This supplier is the people who give you an input. So in the middle of the of the process, or in the middle of the system, we have the transformation element. This transformation element is the people is over here. All the people that operate and, and make a he execution of the process, of the activities of the process, are here in the transformation process. Every customer starts with a need, and this need is make a transformation for the specification. This specification receives for the organization, the organization how to transform something that the customer asks for them. And then it, the organization asks for a supplier with a specification, with a very clear specification, the supplier give, give to the organization an input, the organization receive the input, made the transformation in an output, the customer receive the output, and then they get a feedback for the transformation process, or I mean for the organization. And finally, the transformation give for the supplier another fit. This system is moving around in all the organization every day, every hour, and every minute because we, we work it to transform something. And we were thinking it's in service also, in service also, because every process has an input. We had to transform something and we had to finally in the output. Of course, in the service is a different relationship between the customer and the output because, because the customer in the service is very near to the organization, is close to them. You don't have the opportunity to have a distributor. For example, in the final goods, you have a, sometimes a distributor. You can go to a retailing, a retailing store and you can buy some final goods, but there is not a factory, of course. But in the service is a clear space between them and a direct space. Uh, the academics call this, this space moment of truth. Uh, it's what designing in the in the beginning of the 90s for, from the CEO of the Scandinavian Airlines, Jan Carson, that they say the moment of truth is the time that the customer make an image for your organization in this space. It means when you had the contact with the organization at the beginning, this is the, fine, the first impact for your image that what happened with this organization or what kind of organization is. Sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it's good. And uh, Jan Carson say sometimes it's, it's during in the length of the time is six seconds or eight seconds. Incredible, yeah? It's happened around the world. Okay, let's go. Uh, there is a many characteristics I will not go through but because we don't have enough time to do it about what is a main process or an effective process, I will, I will show some of them and then I will go to the methodology in a little bit because I don't know how, how, how one at a time, handy and, and okay. I, I think we had 15 we, minutes. We are more. okay, we are doing good. We are okay. okay. Okay, thank you, thank we you. We are doing good. Thank you, thank you. So uh, this, this main characteristic is very important to understand what is an effective process. For example, every process follows the transformer input and output system. That's a very important point. Every process has limits that exist in an entrance, an input, and then the output, an exit. And this is it's very obvious, this, this point, no, but it's very important to know what is the entrance of the process because we control the inputs in this process. The inputs is a very important important point because you are going to transform this in an output. Third one, every process has a specific purpose which must be with a strategic object, which is most linked with the strategic objectives of the organization. Every process has a link with the strategic dimension of the organization. Why? Because the process cannot work alone. Every moving around of the, of the organization, you have to link your process with, your, with the strategic point of view of your, strat or your, your strategic plan. 
Each activity of the process is operated by human and interrelated with machine and equipment. In the theory of process, the human is a main important action. Why? Because they make the execution and they, they make the process every day. Number five, every process has a process, one process owner that has managed all the process. And number six, that is very related, a process must cross organizational boundaries through an horizontal flow. As you can see in the, in the first image, the process is gone in horizontal flow. It's not in a vertical flow. The vertical flow is more, is more focused in a Taylorian, or I mean, Frederick Taylor point of view, okay? This is, we, we call this kind of organization bureaucratic mechanicist of organization. We're in the 21st century, we're looking for flow, continuous flow. Now we are in a very big movement in, around the world that we call agile movement or agile flow of the organization or agile organization of horizontal organizations that try to be more efficient and more, more quickly, more agile, more lean organization in every movement around. Number seven, every process must measure to perform of the process against the objectives that must be related to the client's requirement. Number eight, the validity of performance measure taking must verify. Therefore, the process must has established physical control and measuring points for physical feedback points. This physical control is mean the quality control points. Every process has his own quality control points. It's an obvious way we have at least three of one. The, the first physical control will be at the beginning of the process because you, we control the inputs. The second one will be at the, at the end of the process because we control the outputs. And in the middle of them, we have to assure the process with some physical control. Number nine, every process is composed for activities and each one of them can be documented in a form of work procedures. And finally, and finally, and finally, every process, every process has the potential to be improved. So we can see here the horizontal flow in every letter could be an organizational department or sometimes will be a position, but you can see the process cross boundaries, all the departments is moving around to the final point. Okay, I will go to the methodology. This is the methodology to improve all the process. We have seven steps. We developed this methodology based in most of the classical books about process innovation. Two of them is one of the professor uh, James Harrington that we, we call business process improvement. And the second one is a process innovation professor, for, for professor Thomas Davenport. Uh, in Latin America, in Mexico in particular, we added one step that is a very important point because when we work to the, with the companies, we try to make this process innovation methodology, we try to apply this process, inno process innovation methodology, but sometimes the workers don't understand very well what is a process. Because a process is not an, a function of your activity in your departmental function, no. It's you are a part of a set of activities and you're working around for internal client on internal customer and is flowing to the final customer. So it was difficult to do that. It was very difficult to do that. So uh, we introduced this step that we call it understanding because we made this claim and we added this claim for the William Deming claim that he says everything that you cannot measure, you cannot improve. But the problem is, if you don't understand you can something that you measure, you cannot improve also. So we had first to fall to understand what is a process, what is the relationship with the process, and then to make a strong relationship with the measure and then to improve. So uh, we designed a small tool, what we call system process diagram. This system process diagram, yeah, is a, big picture, an holistic picture of your process of your organization. So we started with a central process or core business. In this central process of core business, we're moving around to the output. That is central process of core business is the core process of your organization. I will be trying to make a small sample because uh, a small example because it's sometimes complex to explain. For instance, if we are working in a restaurant, what is your main central process? Uh, what is our, our core business? What 
a core business is what are you doing? So what are you doing? And cook and sell foods, yeah, on beverage. So this is the central process. When you work in this kind of tools, in I mean in this kind of process tools, always use in a verb. The verb help to you because verb is an action. So to cook and to sell foods and beverage. This is the central process. Then let's go to the outputs. What is output? We said the output is the result of the process. So what is output in a restaurant? With the, well, it can be the dishes, it can be the beverage, and sometimes it can be the service. Yeah, and if we're moving around, if we're moving around in this, in this concept, the output will be also sometimes a distance transport or your food, maybe. So we have four, at least four main categories of output. Why we do this kind of tool with employees? Because we had to make a, a, a reflection on what, what we are working around. First of all, to understand what are your central process or your main mission of your, of, your, of your business, and then what is your output, and then your customer. Also, we have to identify your customer. What kind of customer do we have in our, organ in our organization? And here we can see the system process diagram in a macro point of view, yeah, of course. But we can see in a micro point of view. At the beginning, we, we, we draw all the organization, this big picture, and then we can go in, inside of them. Well, now we have central process, we have output, we have customers, and then we also draw and we write the inputs in a restaurant, it's very clear, yeah? Raw material, ingredients, yeah, sometimes service, we need, and, and very important point, the requirement of the, of the customer, because the customer came to the restaurant and said, I want this dish, I want this dish. This is an input also, because in service, the customer start as a supplier, and then they transform in a, in a customer. That's an important point, service. Finally, we have the suppliers that give the inputs, every retail point of view, supermarkets, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have the, we divide the central process in two main processes. These two main processes is very important to understand what kind of process we manage in, all, in, in our organization. In this central process, we have Three process, and we have support process. And there is a clear difference. I mean, the central process converge all the process and inside of together of your organization. But if we divide it to under, in order to understand them, we have three process and support process. What is the main difference? The key process has a strong relationship and a very big impact in the output and the customer. It, it means that, that the key process control the transformations. That's a very important point of the output. And the support process manage and support the key process. Most of them are administrative and internal process. So I will try to make an example with the restaurant. I continue with this example in order that you can understand more easy this, uh, this explanation. What is a key process? in a central process to cook to cook is a key process why because when i go to the restaurant as a customer i will go to eat yes or not i don't want to see how they make the accountability in in the restaurant the accountability is an internal process this is a support process look this is a very important point yeah uh, uh, in fact, if you want to understand what is the uh, uh, most important process, the key process or support process, both process, key process and support processes are important, but they are different. If you want to manage and you want to improve, you have to look in around what is a key process and what is a support process. To cook is one of them. To serve the client, to, to serve the customers is another one. Sales and marketing will be another one. Here in support process, we can put accountability, we can, we can put information technology, we can put maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. This is a big, big difference. If you've used this methodology, you can sensibilize and you can train your employees in order to understand that, that you are working in not just in departments, isolate departments. You are working in process. You are working in a system 
that you had a really strong relationship with suppliers, internal suppliers, with external customers. You had receipt outputs. We had in a key process. You had in a support process. So this methodology can help you to do that. But this is the beginning of the methodology because you just understand. You can go in a, in a as already said, you can go to the micro level and then you can go in the micro level. I will not explain the micro level because I would like to explain another, another kind of chart and to find this Muda that we're looking for. Now we cannot see the Muda because we're in a macro level and just in a description level. If you go to a micro level in the, in the system diagram, you can identify one key process and put as a central process. For example, I can put here to cook. Then the output will be the dishes that already ordered for the customer. Then the customer, who is the customer in the micro level? It will be the final customer of the restaurant or who is the customer? The customer in the micro level is the waiter. It's not the final customer because the waiter is going to receive the dish and is going to transport to the final customer. So in the micro level, you can see also this relationship we're looking for between the employees in order to break down this invisibility these uh, barriers that the functional departments may for you in, in your organization. So the supplier also will be the cost, the waiter, and the input will be the requirement of the final customer, and we then process to cook the dishes, and we receive the dishes. So we can do that in all, all the process of the restaurant. Let's go to the, another step of the methodology. I think I in, in the time, uh, just it's the final, 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 final slice. Murak? That's perfect. If you can complete it in a uh, few minutes or five minutes, it will be great. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. This is a, a, a two or three more slides. Uh, sorry, because I incited with this subject, <laughs> I, I really like, and so I can talk around about the subject. Uh, no, no worries. Uh, this is uh, how a presentation ma uh, makes us feel better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you. You are not reading the slides, so, so you are just uh, contributing the slides with your own comments, uh, own uh, own approach. This is why we like these kinds of presentations. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, for the step three of the methodology is mapping your process. Mapping your process is as you have to document your process in the current situation. That's a very important point because we, we are thinking to map in a process. We are always thinking in, in the ideal process because it had to be like this. It had to be like this. We had to flow like this. We had to do it like this. No. At the beginning, you had to map in your current situation before you had to identify the mood of the process. That's a very important point. Second point, you had to go, go into micro level of activity inside of the micro level activity of the process. Sometimes we map in the process in a very, very grow level, in a very uh, complex and sometimes high level, a macro level. We have to micro level. Third one, we have to use the methodology of direct observation. You have to go, the Japanese call to the gemba, to the place, yeah, and look the process. Uh, most of the methodology will be the interview, interview, methodology because you make an interview with a with the employee how you do this how do you do this this is a very no good methodology because the worker always says that they want to want to see to you to hear to you because if there is an error they are going to they are not going to say to you of course so direct observation is a, the best one methodology go to the gemba and observe what happened with the process we can use two kind of tools block diagram and flow flow, chart, and process actor. Uh, we use the symbol of the process innovation symbol that is, uh, that is make a status and a standard procedure for American National Standard Institute. The, this, this symbol, the symbol of the process, uh, process flow charts is related with process innovation. It's not related with process documentation. That's a very important point because every symbol can focus in a potential muda in your organization. For example, if you have if you have here, and I will finish almost the conference, but this is some of the important points. You have so many transport in your flow chart. You can see you are moving around your working process product around 
yeah, your company. If you can move around, you have a lot of control points, quality control points, inspection and decision making together. You have a, we can, I will call a song, this word is not exist in English, controlitis, yeah? A excess of control, yeah? Excess of control, that, that's what will be happen. Then, if you have, for example, a lot of this kind of C, as a kind of C that is a electronic transport, you moving around, wax up, mails, a roll all over the world. I think the exec of wax ups, exec of mails in the 21st century is the mood of the 21st century. There are a lot of ones. You can see your inbooks, <laughs> 300 mails, and 70% of them or 80% of them don't get value added for you in nothing. That's true. So go to the flow, go to the micro level, go to the Gemba and go to the current situation and you started to draw this mapping. Uh, I will make an example very, very quickly. This is a, a process of personal financial uh, credit. For example, you can see here the customer, you can see here the receptioning of the bank, bank cashier, manager, and we started to draw. The customer write to Bram, indicate the instruction, the reception and receive the instruction, then they print the ticket, that is here the first one. This is symbol I already, for, I forget to tell you, this is the late. Then go to the cashier. We identify one muda here, maybe because there is a delay, because there is a line waiting for another customer. And we go in this level, this level to drawing and to mapping all the process, because we had to identify all the mood. Yeah, all the muda in all the process. So I, I want to make a final conclusion for my presentation. Uh, sometimes we think that the process is very far away for us when we work in an organization. But you never forget because you never forget something that is very important for you. You are working in a process every day. Every activity you do, you are in a process. It doesn't matter what kind of organization are you are you working, but you are in a process. Because sometimes somebody said, I am in a service organization. I, I, I'm very far away for this concept. No, because you make activities every day and you make a process. And don't forget, MUDA is around you and MUDA is consume resources. Don't get value added for you. Don't get value added for your customer and don't get value added for your organization. We have Kaizen philosophy with this process innovation methodology in order to reduce and eliminate the mood. Thank you very much. Dr. Barrosa, uh, thank you so much for the uh, fruitful presentation. Uh, so actually I'm not very familiar with that uh, philosophy or this approach, but uh, now I have uh, many questions and I, I have something in my mind. Thanks okay. for the contribution. And by the way, I would like to remind the participants, the audience, if they have any questions, they can write on the chat box. Uh, while we are waiting for the questions, possible questions, uh, I would like to ask some questions to you, uh, if you don't mind. So of course, uh, of course. Yeah, actually, uh, I was planning to ask the question, uh, why you used uh, the bonsai tree on your presentation? But uh, ah, yeah, yeah. my question, <laughs> you already answered the, the philosophy, the approach. Yeah, of I, use of, use yeah. Of it. I, I really like that part. Thank you. I was living in Japan three years to come back to Mexico. And uh, almost every two years, I, 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 visit, I, I am visiting professor of uh, some universities, Yokohama University, uh, Kyoto University, Kansai University, and to make some kind of lecture because the Japanese want to see what happened with his own methodologies in Latin America. So I had a very close relationship with this culture. Uh, if you can see on the, in the top down of the slides, this is my name in Japanese. In, you know, in the square small, gold square small, is my name in Japanese. <laughs> that, that's perfect. It's some kind of copyright, you know, for the slides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So, by the way, uh, I I really love Japan uh, culture. Or uh, I one day I I really would like to be in Japan and just visit see uh, the beauties of Japan. 
So this is why I, I, I also enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. So, uh, in the introduction part of the presentation, so uh, we, we saw an image like uh, we are happy because it's not our site. And yeah. I, you may think it's not directly relevant to, uh, with the presentation, but uh, do you think this approach is the same that we are having uh, globally? Okay, in one side of oh. the world, people have uh, great problems. Uh, they, they have hunger, they, they have many health problems. But on the other hand, on the other side of the world, so people are uh, get, uh, getting fatter and fatter and they, they are uh, earning more and more money. Uh, how can you just link this approach or this figure into uh, Kaizen approach or management issue? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor Murad. It's an excellent question. Thank you very much. Uh, if you think, if you think, you can put a label of the bulk in this boat, you can be, put the label pla er, planet Earth, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. Or world. So uh, everybody says that we are in a different cultures, different different point of view, different religions. Because we are in Turkey, we are in Mexico, we are in Europe, we are in Asia, we are Japan, but in in inside of the of the boat the process of the all the planets is almost the same yeah? if you can think it's almost the same one of them i will be, i will put one example because there are so many but one example is healthy uh, everybody say okay now is nothing happened but one virus yeah put the earth in a very difficult situation so healthy we share this process in older one another one is environmental. Yeah, environmental, the weather, the, the climate, everything is, we, we share this also, this process for everybody. So pu puberty, migration, for example, they say we, migration is a big problem for Mexico because all the Mexicans want to go to USA. No, but we can see the African people, the Moroccan people want to go to Spain, yeah. Uh, maybe in Turkey there are some migration for Europe, or for you there are some migration for the Middle East. So everybody shares so many processes. And sometimes people, like I said, we are happy is not our side. And somebody want to, and another people working very hard to solve. But if we don't do it together, join together, the boot, the bot is going to be slowed down. And I think uh, most of the people, I, I, I like a lot, uh, one of the most academic, important academics in the world, that is the Professor Mishu Kaku. That's what, what is, that has a very beautiful book that is called The uh, uh, Future of the Humanity. And, and they say, if we went on work together as a team, as a planet Earth team, working around for the species, we, have, we are going to have a big problem in 20 or 30 years. One of the most big examples is with the COVID-19. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have another question uh, that there are uh, two or three sub questions, in including two or three uh, sub questions. So uh, I was uh, really wondering uh, the effect of uh, COVID. And I was trying to understand uh, if we understood the importance of Kaizen philosophy during COVID period. So how, yeah. how could it help us to uh, fix the problems? And uh, you also mentioned uh, the cultural impact uh, while adopting uh, Kaizen philosophy. And you, you had a, a Mexican example, but uh, I also have Turkish example that we have plans, we have long-term plans, but uh, we are trying to focus on processes, but sometime later that we are lost and we are losing the motivation. So uh, of course, these, uh, Kaizen approach, this process uh, innovation methodology is more easy to adopt in, in cultures like Japan, but what about yeah. uh, yeah. other cultures? So how can we overcome the possible cultural problems when we are trying to apply this Kaizen philosophy? Uh, thanks so much for uh, your answers in advance. No, thank you. Thank you very much. It's an excellent question. Uh, it's difficult. I can say that at the beginning is difficult. But it's not, it's not impossible. I will show, I will show uh, very quickly. This is in Spanish, the presentation, but we can see one application that we did in a 
Public Hospital in Mexico before the COVID-19 about Kaizen and Process Innovation and after COVID-19, I mean after, I mean in the middle of the, of the pandemic. Uh, we start this application, uh, we start this application in February of 2019 and we started with some technique of Kaizen, I mean in job, on job training, 5S, Kata, Kata methodology, Process Innovation methodology and we follow around to January 2020. Uh, what happened with this? Uh, we try to make an, a training that very clear that uh, physicians, medical employees, try to work in around in your mind in problem solving methodology. Because it's one of the most important points because the people have to look in around that sometimes the muda in the process and the problems and the problems in the process have to be solved with a strong and disciplined methodology. That's a very important point to break out in the cultures. Because the discipline is an important point. With, if you have a methodology that has five steps, follow one, then the second two, then the three. You have to jump for the one to the four, yeah? Because it's very common in so many cultures. No, why I had to follow that? We had to discipline this methodology. And we show them how to make a Pareto shark, how to make a Ishikawa or cause and effect shark. And then we train them in 5S, 5S, you can see the 5S, yeah? That was very important, the 5S. Order, organization, cleaning, systematization, standardization, discipline. We have to do it because uh, some people try to think in that the COVID-19 is very far away. It was in China in that moment, but it's coming around before you. We never know, yeah, in that moment, but it happened for all over the world. So look and you can see all the organizations that they do it and they, we are prepared. But the most important point, more than five years, it was the process innovation. You can see here, they, they analyze the process. I mean, the process of the at attendance of people who have some respiratory uh, six. In that moment, it was not COVID. I mean, influenza perhaps, or maybe another one. And they eliminate all the muda and to improve the process flow, you can see here, you can see in the uh, uh, orange arrows here, look, to have a special area, to special area to canalize all the patients for this special area for the respiratory problems for the, and, and, and then for the COVID-19 people. And then allow them to assure the process to be more safe and many, uh, some physician and some medical uh, employers don't die because they improve the process. So if you can see, if you can see the Kaizen philosophy can help you to organize your organization, to organize your flow, to control your process. Yeah. Because the Muda, can you imagine the Muda and COVID-19 together in one process? Come on, it's very risky, yo. very risky for the people. So they also create a scenarios in that moment, I mean in January of 2020, scenarios that is we have a pandemic, what are we going to do? And then we, these scenarios, we do it with activities, with very clear activities to do. We have to do like this, like this, like this, and we prepare the hospital to do it like this in a process innovation. So 5S, training, problem solving methodologies, and then improve your process flow help a lot for this hospital they, they are the one of the best hospital in mexico and maybe in latin america because they did very well so may, i think many few people of his own employees uh, what contact for them for the sick for the covid 19. five percent of the employees so in, in another hospital it was 20 percent 30 percent very very big very big in, in this hospital five percent they did very well because they prepare by themselves in order to think into problem solving, to think in process, and to think to eliminate muda because we have to be ready for something is happening all over the world. So that's a one important point. Uh, another important point is the culture. Yeah? I mean, what, how, to, how to destroy the barrier of the culture? One of, one of the main issues is the people have to be participate in, in a very active way in the process. I mean, I, I, I want to say in another words, you, you, you are, are waiting for somebody to help to you to improve your process. I mean, a consultant person, I mean, so consultant leader. No, it's not like this. You have to do it your own improvements. 
You have to participate in, in an active way. Maybe there is a resistance sometimes. But it will be more people that join to you because the people are stressful in your own workplace. So if you improve for you, you improve your own workplace. So we are working like this. The, if you improve, your active participation is helpful to, to you. It's helpful to you because you reduce your stress, your work stress, and you feel more comfortable when you work every day. That's a very important point. It's in a micro level, micro level focus, in a micro level focus. At least it was, it, it was working for me in Spain. It was working for me in Latin America, and it was working for me in Mexico, at least. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the answer. Uh, I can't see any questions from the participants. Uh, I think I've asked all the questions uh, they had the in, yeah, they they had in, in their minds. And uh, Dr. Uh, Barasa, I would like to thank you for your contribution. So uh, we, we really liked the presentation. It was very fruitful. Uh, I would like to thank you and thank you again uh, for this uh, fruitful presentation. And I also would like to thank all the participants who watched, who followed this uh, interesting uh, presentation. And before concluding, I also would like to thank Ms. Hande Dizdaroğlu for her contribution uh, to this webinar. Uh, I, I couldn't make it uh, without her uh, organization skills and uh, helps. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would like to thank her very much. And hope to see you in the next following uh, webinars. Thank you again. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.